Have you ever wondered what's inside that accessory case attached to your sewing machine? It's got all these little items, these attachments, different shapes and sizes. They look weird, but they're actually super useful and they can add a lot more convenience, a lot more consistency in your sewing work. So it's worth exploring because it can actually make your life a lot easier. So let's check out what's inside the accessory case of my sewing machine. So here's all the tools laid out. Let's start from the left to the right and go from the most common pieces, extra bobbins. It'll come with three extra bobbins. They're pretty useful because you usually have one bobbin per color. So if you plan on using more than three, you're gonna need to buy extra, which isn't actually that hard. I bought this 12 pack of bobbins for a few bucks online. Make sure when you're buying extra bobbins that you buy the right size and shape this is the class 15 plastic bobbins. So just make sure you do some research ahead of time because you don't want to end up buying the wrong size for your machine. It's kind of funny because I actually just survived off of three bobbins for a really long time, longer than I should have. And when I needed a fourth thread color, I would just find my smallest wound bobbin and add the thread on top of that already pre-spun bobbin. There are ways to get around it, but honestly, if you think you're gonna use more than three colors, just buy some extra bobbins. It'll make your life a lot easier. Link below if you want that 12 pack, and let's move on to the next item. Next up, extra needles. I've heard people say that they change their needles after every project or before every project. I have not done that. That would go through so many needles. So usually if your machine's not working well or it's skipping stitches or making a tapping sound, then needles could be the culprit. So it probably means your needles are getting dull or they're the wrong size, so you'll need to change them. There's a flat part to the needle, so make sure you research online which direction that flat part should be facing when you're replacing them. And in general, the relationship with needles and fabric, the bigger the number, the bigger the needle, the heavier the fabric, and then the reverse, the smaller the number, the smaller the needles, the smaller the fabric and with a smaller needle comes with a smaller eye so you'll also need thinner thread next is a spool caps we got two types we have the normal big one and the tiny small one so the big one is for the horizontal spool pin it's the cap that holds the spools in place you should have it nice and snug no gap between the cap and the spool and the big side should be closest to the thread to help avoid getting caught on the teeth of the spool. The smaller spool cap I use for the vertical spool pin and luckily I have a video that helps you determine which orientation of the spool pin you need depending on what kind of thread you have. But you can also find more detailed explanation in my other video. The accessory case comes with four different types of presser feet. The most standard presser foot is the standard presser foot. And I use this probably about 70% of the time. The other 29% I use the zipper foot so I can get a really close edge stitch. And then the last 1% is for buttons and holes. The standard press foot has these two triangles kind of look like dog ears, I guess. The next one is the zipper foot. So depending on which side you're stitching the zipper on will determine which side of the presser foot you put this on. It actually has this little groove at the bottom and it gives you a little bit more clearance so when you're sewing zippers there's space for the zipper teeth to slide underneath the presser foot pretty convenient and then you have the button and buttonhole feet each of these have their own videos a quick how-to tutorial so feel free to check those out if you want more detailed but we have the button foot and you'll know this because it has the blue tips with the rubber ends which gives you a little bit of grip on the button from moving and then you have the buttonhole foot. It's this long white plastic presser foot and it has this little compartment at the back with a little button symbol and it automatically adjusts the size of the hole according to the size of the button. Really clever tool, super convenient. So definitely try that out. And then we're down to the last three items. This long silver tool is a seam guide Basically, the throat plate has markings for sizing when the needle's centered. So you have uh, imperial and you have the metric. And what this long tool does is it attaches to the back for when you need larger stitches past one inch. 
there's many ways to use it as a guide as it gives you different distances which you can customize by pulling your ruler out and adjusting it accordingly and it'll be on top of the fabric or just to the side not hidden under the fabric like the throw plate and then you have this brush which conveniently has a seam ripper on the back if you take off the cap and attach it on the other end it extends like a handle but if you don't have a proper seam ripper i'd highly recommend one with a longer handle to properly take care of your machine, you're going to want to take the triangle tool and use it as a screwdriver to remove the throat plate. This is where you can really use the brush to get all the lint out of your sewing machine. This brush does a great job of actually holding on to the lint, not just brushing it to the side. You can put it in the small little crevices and actually pull the lint out. The screwdriver is very convenient. It's pretty basic for taking the needle in and out. When you need to adjust the throat plate, you could adjust the pressure of the pressure foot or when you're removing the sewing foot. And you should stick around because I have a few DIYs that I'm working on, some hot stuff. So subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be the first to find out when they drop. And until next time, peace.